Classification of Leg Calf Perthes Disease Many classification systems for Perthes disease have been described. Among these, four of them are very important for postgraduates. They are the Waldenstrom staging, the Herring lateral pillar classification, the Catterall classification, and the Salter Thompson classification. Among these, also, the first two, that is the Waldenstrom staging and the Herring classification, are very important. The Waldenstrom staging describes the stages of the Perthes disease. The first stage is the initial stage in which interruption of blood supply to the femoral head leads to necrosis of the femoral head. This is followed by the second stage which is the fragmentation stage in which the body resorbs the necrotic tissue. The third stage is the reossification stage in which the body through osteoblasts tries to create new bone in the area where the bone has been resorbed. The fourth stage is the remodeling stage because after reossification the head is often misshapen that is it is enlarged or is flattened. Remodeling stage attempts to remodel the head and shape it according to the correct shape of the femoral head. The herring lateral pillar classification has the best prognostic predictability among all the classification systems. It is based on the height of the lateral pillar in the fragmentation stage in anterior posterior radiograph. So herring lateral pillar classification is based on the fragmentation stage of the Perthes disease. On the basis of the height of the lateral pillar in the fragmentation stage, it is divided into three types. In type A, the lateral pillar is of full height. So we can see the femoral head has been divided into three pillars the medial pillar the central pillar and the lateral pillar in type a the lateral pillar has full height in type b the lateral pillar has more than 50 percent of the height maintained and in type c it has less than 50 percent of the height maintained a fourth type known as the bc type has been introduced later for better prognostication in which around 50% or slightly more than 50% of the height of the lateral pillar is maintained. However, there is either a thin lateral pillar or decreased density of the lateral pillar or the lateral pillar is lower in height than the central pillar. In these three conditions, it is classified as the BC type. Now, herring lateral pillar classification is very important for prognostication. In type A, it has a uniformly excellent prognosis. In type C, it has a uniformly poor prognosis. However, in type B, patients less than 8 years old have a fair to good prognosis, whereas patients greater than 8 years have a poor prognosis. Coming to the collateral classification of Perthes disease, it is based on the extent of head involvement and has the following grades. In grade 1, the anterior epiphysis is only involved. In grade 2, along with the anterior epiphysis, there is a central sequestrum. In grade 3, almost the entire epiphysis is involved except the most medial and lateral epiphysis. And in grade 4, the entire epiphysis is involved. Here also, in grade 1, there is excellent prognosis, whereas in grade 3 and 4, there is poor prognosis. Grade 2 has good prognosis if the patient is less than 4 year old and if the patient is more than 4 year old, it has generally fair to poor prognosis. Coming to the Salter Thompson system, this is based on the radiographic crescent sign and what is this crescent sign? It is basically a subchondral fracture in the supralateral part of the femoral head. So based on this subchondral fracture or the crescent sign, it is divided into class A if the crescent sign or subchondral fracture involves less than half of the femoral head and class B if it involves more than half of the femoral head. Now class A will have excellent to good prognosis whereas class B will have a poor prognosis. So these are the commonly used classification systems for leg calf perthes disease if you like these videos 
please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for further videos. Also, comment in the comment section regarding the topics you will like to be covered in the future videos. Thank you.